Greetings, salutations, hello. I am your host, Video Vomit, and uh, welcome to the bunker. Uh, it is uh, super safe down here. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, lava flow, snow flow, uh, your ant flow. Uh, doesn't matter. You're, you're going to be safe here. Um, uh, today's uh, interesting, uh, uh, interesting episode we got today. Um, I had been trying to think about what we should do next on the show. You know, it's like uh, we get done with one and, I'm, and I have to like, what are we going to do now? Oh, no. You know, I like start to freak out a little bit. Um, and uh, the first episode was all about uh, Safubi and vinyl toys and stuff. Um, and uh, so I thought that maybe uh, maybe we could do another one of those. Um, and I had to like think of uh, like a name or something that we could call these episodes. So uh, we're going to call these episodes Vinyl Variations. If we had like a cool graphic, it would like smack on the screen right now. Maybe we could do that one day. I don't know. Um, but uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, we're going to talk about uh, some recent um, uh, things I've acquired for my uh, massive collection of vinyl toys. Um, the majority of these today aren't going to be uh, Safubi. There are some that I have, um, but uh, you know, a lot of these are from uh, uh, China or, or somewhere else. So, um, but we're going to go completely against everything I just said, and we're going to look at uh, some more Mad Balls that I recently bought. Um, I bought uh, so Kid Robot um, just uh, came out with these maybe like a couple days ago. Um, I, I pre-ordered, or I didn't pre-order, I ordered them on uh, BestBuy.com and I, and I rushed out to my local uh, uh, completely blundered and, and scavenged over uh, uh, Best Buy and I, and I picked these up. Um, so uh, Kid Robot, they're uh, like a designer toy company. Um, they're pretty, um, I reluctantly use the word commercial, um, they're pretty commercial. Uh, they have like uh, little vinyl toys, they have like a lot of, they do a lot of like licensing stuff, you know, like cartoons and you know, like nerdy stuff, you know, they'll make like little, you know, kind of like vinyl figures, a lot of blind box stuff. Um, but they did, they got the Madball license and they made some blind box Madball figures. They even made those bigger uh, foam ones of the originals that I showed you on that Madballs episode. So um, if you've seen those, you're going to know exactly what we're talking about. And if you don't, um, uh, go back after this episode and, uh, and watch some of that. So uh, first one we're going to talk about is the Freddy one. How cool is that? Here, we'll, we'll go on the close up. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, this they're very exaggerated versions, but uh, they're very cool. I like that uh, that they added the brain on there because uh, that that's very reminiscent from the movies. If you if you remember when he uh, takes off a part of his uh, skin on his head, there, uh, yeah, these are really cool. Uh, so you know, Mad Balls, they're like those gross uh, foam. These are foam as well. Um, they're not vinyl. Uh, <laughs> you know, this episode's called Vinyl Variations, but you know, it's just something I picked up. So and I didn't really have a place to put it anywhere else. So deal with it, people. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about, uh, Jason and Jason looks pretty good too. I like that he's blue. Um, and, and then he's got his broken mask there. It kind of reminds me of, uh, the, uh, the new blood Jason. He's got the worms crawling in him, uh, kind of like from, uh, part four there. Um, the only thing I don't really like is, uh, is, uh, his hair. Um, uh, Jason doesn't really have hair, so I don't really know why, uh, this one has hair. And then um, I don't really like the pupils. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe I might uh, paint this or something. It's, it's really nice overall. I, I already really, really like it. But, um, you know, who knows? Maybe I might customize it a little bit. We're going to see a lot of customs today. Um, then we got the, the Predator one. Uh, Pre Predator is freaking awesome. I love Predator. I love Alien. Um, but, you know, I like the smarter foe. I like the more well-equipped foe. Uh, and that's the Predator. Uh, he's really cool, too. They all have, like, green slime on them in one form or, or another. Um, you know, Predator's got the neon blood. Uh, yeah, these are really cool. I, and, like, the, the crazy amount of detail on these. And then, like, the paint uh, decos on these are really good as well. Really cool! And then, uh, last but not least, we have the Xenomorph. I ordered the uh, Leatherface one as well. I did not see the one at Best Buy when I was there. Um, so some bastard already got there ahead of me and took it. Um, but yeah, and here was the Xenomorph one. This one's kind of weird. It, you know, it's got like all the the Giger esque type of uh, stuff. You know, he's, the the Xenomorph has like the tubes coming off the back, and they couldn't necessarily do that here, so they kind of had them like curve around and stuff. Uh, looks a little weird, but but still cool. And then also he has a tongue instead of the uh, the inner mouth. Um, maybe they didn't want to scare kids. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure the, why they chose to do a tongue. 
I guess it's kind of funny. I don't know, but uh, I'd, I would have rather there be like a little grabby mouth instead. But yeah, still cool, still very cool. All right, uh, so yeah, we're, we're, burning the, we're burning the oil already. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next uh, thing we're gonna be talking about. Um, I got this recently from uh, uh, a toy company called uh, Awesome Toy. Um, you can give them a follow on uh, Instagram. Uh, and you can also follow them on their website. Uh, they got like a little blog postings. You can uh, follow their site pretty uh, um, quite often. With they, they're always coming out with some new stuff. Um, now these these aren't uh, these are Safubi. Um, they were made in Japan. Um, the cool thing about these is um, I really like the the card art on on this one here. Uh, it's really really cool, uh, it, and it has like the little hanging uh, TVs here. Um, now this is based on uh, They Live. It's a uh, John Carpenter film um, uh, starring uh, the awesome wrestler Rowdy Piper. Um, and uh, it's basically, uh, you know, if you haven't seen it, uh, please, please, please go see it. It's, it's, it, it reflects our times very well. Um, it's one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever made in my opinion. I love this movie so freaking much. Um, uh, basically uh, a, a drifter um, trying to find work um, he kind of gets entangled into this conspiracy uh, where aliens have already taken over the earth and they look like these uh, uh, <laughs> he said he's got some very colorful language for uh, <laughs> for how they look in the but they're like these blue like alien skeleton skeletons and uh, and they they look like people but if you wear these like special glasses over here he's got them on um, you can see their true form, which is these blue. And uh, so it's kind of like uh, the toys or the TV sets are kind of like reminiscent of like some of the very last scenes of the movie. They even have uh, the, our two main characters duking it out in, in, in one of these like super, it's, I, I think it's like a five or six minute long uh, fight scene. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's totally amazing. And then, uh, and then uh, like a TV set from some of the last, end day, uh, last scenes of the movie and then some uh, some violence on there too, but yeah, these are really cool. I really like the uh, the like it's pretty clever, you know. It's like not all vinyl Safubi or just vinyl toys or designer toys have to be like, you know, like some monster, or some uh, character or creature. Like you can actually do some really interesting uh, out of the box, haha, um, <laughs> type of uh, type of stuff here. So that's really really cool. I really like this. Um, I have not opened them yet, obviously, because. I just don't have the heart to. I, I this is like the, some of the coolest packaging I've ever seen on a toy. So, I think I think it's gonna stay this way for quite some time. Um, there's like a there's another couple sets. Um, nothing with a with a card like this, uh, but there's like a Videodrome esque one that that is really really cool. Um, Long live the new flesh, if you know what I'm talking about. Eh? Um, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, uh, there's that one. Um, and now uh, we're gonna be looking at. Uh, Another figure. We're just really burning along here, aren't we? Um, this is uh, from Retro Band. Um, you can follow him uh, at Retro Band on Instagram, and you can also uh, follow, go on his site, um, and he's got some um, some really cool stuff on there. Um, Retro Band got his start making um, these really cool uh, 3.75 esque figures um you know like the, they're kind of like the same size as the original kenner star wars figures you know the gi joes and stuff like that um he made like horror movie-esque ones um and uh you know the, the creep show one he did was like a little it was like the cool card art and then uh and then like a, a bunch of uh, cockroaches in there um and uh and i think he did the same thing from like uh, night of the creeps you know he put a slug one of the slugs in there one of the one of the creeps and uh yeah, and then so he recently got involved with Unbox Industries, and they uh, team up and they made uh, this awesome figure called Meats. And uh, here he is in all his glory. Um, he's really cool. Uh, this guy is—he's super gross, gr real grody looking. And he's got his like stump here, his like chopped off stump. Did he cut off his own hand? It's bloody. I don't know. Did he? Did he? Who knows? What happened? These are these are the things you you can make up, <laughs> you know. You can make it up as you go. Um, but yeah, so I just love like this is clearly super horror influence here. Um, and then just like the subtle uh, paint schemes that that he did on here are really cool as well. Um, like even on the bottom of the feet, check that out. He's got like little little messed up feeties. That guy needs a pet egg real bad. <laughs> he needs a uh, a pedicure. 
Um, and then he comes with his uh, his awesome uh, his awesome butcher knife. I love it how you know it's got like subtle references to things. Maybe this is, maybe it isn't. But the metal plate makes me think of a uh, chop top from Texas Chainsaw too. Um, and then the face just it, it's like a cross between Cropsey from The Burning. I have him on my computer here. Can you see the family resemblance? <laughs> and then uh, it reminds me of kind of a Jason as well because of the because of the creepiness. And he also kind of looks like a Fulci zombie, which we'll be talking about quite a bit. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, cousin. Um, but yeah. Uh, so th this one's uh, his popularity has been like really growing with this figure. Um, they did a uh, a couple different variations. Um, uh, there's there's also going to be a blank black release, uh, so it's like completely blank black vinyl. Um, uh, so yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. Uh, I think it releases this Saturday, as of this episode releasing uh, this Saturday, uh, that that release will happen. Uh, but don't take one without me getting mine first, because then I'll I will hunt you like a, like a like a dog. I will hunt you because I need a blank one to paint. So uh, so don't get my way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I really like this figure a lot. Um, check out Retroband. They have lots of really cool stuff. Um, I'm following them on Instagram, like I said. Uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, so now we're going to move on. I'm going to put the, put the big baby down here. And uh, we have some stuff from my buddy, uh, Michael Scadam. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram uh, at uh, Draculaser. And um, so some of the first stuff... Uh, these are these are his uh, new Chinese uh, based vinyl toys. Um, they were uh, produced by Gums Productions. Um, so uh, you can also follow them on on Instagram as well. Um, so we have three different variations here. Uh, we'll talk about the how I what order I got them in. I got this one first. Um, this is the uh, Alien Laser. Um, this is the green release, uh, so it's a green vinyl with some subtle sprays here and, and, and the white paints on the, on the bones and the fingy, fingy tips here and the toe tips. Um, this is really cool. So if you follow Michael on Instagram at all, um, you, can, uh, you can see that these toys look exactly like his drawings, his art. It's very, very like... Um, I don't want to say rudimentary. I want to say like it's it's simplistic, but then like the colors he uses, the the style he uses, it's really appealing to, to like my art sensibilities. I really really like his art. Um, so definitely go check his art out if you wanna if you wanna see more of that. And then we have uh, the second one I got, which is the same one, just just blank black. And he's like, I always find that uh, black blanks are like it's really hard to show up on on screen. So let's try and get some uh, some gleaming light on there, some reflections to to show. So yeah, uh, these are the same figure, obviously, um, and then just one is blank, one is not painted. Um, I'm going to leave them blank for a little while. Maybe one day I might paint them. I don't know. But I really like this one. Um, so there was like a, it, there, it was this one, and then uh, a, there was uh, black, black ones that had like the red and, and silver sprays on them. That's kind of like a, a classic colorway that people usually do um, with their toys. So uh, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for some of his new toys. Um, and then finally, we got the uh, uh, the Dracula lobster, um, and so this one it has the same body um, and same arm here, but uh, obviously it has a, a different lobster arm and a different head, and he's got this really cool icy translucent blue um, vinyl with uh, with some dark blue sprays on there. Now this is really slick. I really like, like again, it's it's simplistic, but it's like so appealing to me. It's just so cool. I love the way these look. So shiny. Um, and like I said, these were made in China. So uh, a couple of China dolls we got here. But these are really cool. Um, and they're pretty affordable. Um, I got these uh, for 85 And then uh, he has a new figure coming out uh, on his website uh, that I just pre-ordered. Um, and that one's called uh, the Serpentoid. Um, and it's like a green, like... Uh, it's like a mucky green looking uh, uh, guy, and he's got like two big upper arms. He's really cool. I really like that one. There he is. Um, so you can order that one right now, um, and, which I highly recommend if you if you're interested in his toys. Uh, you know that's what it's all about is uh, is is supporting these artists um, so they can make more toys. So my collection and your collection can get bigger and bigger. <laughs> uh, you know. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so yeah, th this is um, uh, the Draculaser uh, figures, uh, the, the Draculops, or Alien Laser, sorry, my bad. Um, but yeah, these figures are awesome. I, I really like these. Uh, definitely, definitely uh, try, and, try and find some for your own. Try and find some for your own collection. Um, and now we're going to be moving on to some more um, American um, artists um, that, that do vinyl. And uh, these ones are Safubi. Um, these are, I talked about Violence Toy in the, uh, in the Keshi episode. Um, and uh, we showed some of their, uh, some of their uh, Keshi that they had. It was the Gore Lords. Um, so if you don't remember that or you haven't seen that, uh, go back and check that out um, because uh, they got their start. Uh, I mean, they have a couple other companies um, where they do like shirts and stuff um, and like sweaters. Um, like They're like uh, horror-themed holiday sweaters. Uh, but uh, they also do toys and uh, and some really freaking cool ones at that. Um, so uh, I got some two that we're going to take a look at right away. Um, I got the uh, Mutant Cop here. And Mutant Cop is awesome. Uh, now, now this is, uh, here we go. Now, <laughs> this is one that, uh, that I painted. Um, he was a completely, uh, I guess I covered it all up. Uh, he was completely white um, and... Uh, and I decided to go with a really uh, gross but vibrant look. Um, now, if this guy kind of looks familiar, um, I think he looks a lot like the melting guy from uh, the melting goon in RoboCop. Um, and, the, and then the one dude is like, don't touch me, man, you know? And then he gets hit by a car and he explodes into like a bunch of chunks. So this is definitely what that guy reminds me of. Um, but obviously he wasn't a cop. Um, so it also does remind me of uh, Maniac Cop as well, um, the, uh, the horror movie Maniac Cop. Uh, but yeah, he's got his little hat here and uh, his little nightstick. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of went all out with this guy. I used um, monster color paints and I used um, Mad Ape paints. I, I, it was like one of the first times I had used um, Mad Ape paints on, on this guy. Um, I used, it was like a, a skin tone color. And then I did... Um, uh, pink sprays on top of that and to do like you know to give it a, like a more three-dimensional look and then I did uh, a uh, red dry rub on some of the skin to uh, give it that extra gross look um, and then uh, just some some custom mixed purple paint uh, made by Monster Color for for the for the suit there and uh, some some vibrant uh, yellow there for the uh, for the badges and the eyes and the teeth um, but yeah, this guy's awesome. I love this guy. He's so cool. We can go for the close-up, I guess, for the, uh, there we go. There we go. Get a, get a good look at him. Yeah, he's awesome. I just love how gross, I love gross toys, you know, like, um, uh, he kind of stands out because, you know, you got all these giant monsters and then you got like this, like melting cop man screaming in pain on your, on your, on your shelf. He's really awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they they actually have um, up on uh, Violence Toys site right now. Um, you can you can go there and you can take a look at some of the stuff that they have up there, and uh, they actually have some stuff in their web shop right now. They have a ta uh, uh, a lavender tower, um, and then they have uh, some. I think they have a blank uh, mutant cop up there as well. Um, and then yeah, so there's a there's a, some of the uh, some of the stuff they have to offer, and. Uh, yeah, they're really talented, and what's really cool is a lot of their figures are one-offs. So, like, if you get one, there's a good chance, like one of those custom-painted ones, there's a good chance that nobody else will ever, nobody else has that one. So that's, like, that's your one-off figure. Um, that's kind of, like, what's appealing about painting them to me is, is that uh, once I'm done painting it, like, nobody else has that one. It's, like, completely original. That's kind of, like, my whole thing. That's what I like to do is I like to find vinyl toys to paint, um, uh, like, you know, I'll find blanks and I'll paint them or customize them. And then they're, then they're a part of my collection, you know, and then it's like a special kind of figure, um, in, in, in this like vast, you know, library of toys that I have. Um, and so that's kind of like my whole like method, you know, that's kind of like the way that I collect, you know, some people only collect certain colored vinyls. Um, some people only collect one artist's, uh, stuff or something like that, you know, um, but uh, I have like a, my own kind of method and my own way of collecting. And I think that that's kind of cool um, for anybody to kind of try out. Like, uh, you know, I, I only like cutesy stuff. You know, I'm only going to get tiny little cute vinyl toys. You know, I don't really like the gross stuff, you know. So everyone kind of has their own tastes, much like regular art. 
you know, if you don't really like gory stuff, you're not going to hang a picture of like, you know, some eviscerated corpse on your wall. You're going to probably want to pick something nicer, you know. So it's, it's, it's the same thing with art. It's all about taste. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and we're going to take a look at another. I have a, I have a few uh, vi um, violence toy figures here. Um, and this is my first violence toy figure I got besides the Gore Lords. Now, this is Trollborg. Um, Trollborg has his own uh, Gore Lord Keshi as well. Um, and, and so this one was my first one. And uh, I painted him. And I also uh, customized the arm. So um, if you're not familiar with uh, kit bashing, which is where you kind of like salvage parts from, uh, you know, what I do is I salvage parts from other toys uh, or something like that. And then I'll kind of like, uh, like Tetris them together to fit, you know, so like there's a bunch of like different uh, stuff from all kinds of different varieties of toys. You know, I like put the tubes in there and I put one up his nose, kind of reminds me of like Dune, you know, that's why I did like the black with the blue. Um, but then, uh, you know, I kind of like put this all together and I glued it all together, and uh, then after that, I I, I painted him, um, you know. And so now he's got this like r r like tr like uh, like cyborg, you know, harpoon arm type thing, and I think that fits his character really well. I'm actually really proud of this one. I really like him a lot. I love his like goofy face. I love how messed up his like face is over here, and then he's got some like I love. See, like this is like a this is kind of a growing trend with vinyl toys is that it's very gross. Um, the texture thing is very important, having interesting textures on there. See, like on the arm here, it has some very interesting textures. Um, that's kind of something to look out for, you know, like what, what, what are you into personally as a, as a collector? Um, I like the gross, gory, weird crap. Um, so, um, you know, like what do you like? What are you into? Um, if you do collect vinyl toys, if you do collect Safubi, uh, what are you into? Tell me in the comments. I'd be really interested to find out. Uh, yeah. So uh, now we got another one to look at. Um, and this is cool because we get to do kind of like a little side-by-side -side comparison. Um, so this is, a, this is the tower. Um, this is a, uh, I showed a painted one on, um, here we'll go for the, there we go. Um, I, sh I showed a painted one earlier on the first episode of the show, um, talking about Savubi and stuff. Um, and uh, I have them right here. So let's, let's so here's the, the one I painted. Um, now this one was a orange glow-in-the-dark vinyl. Um, there, we go. there we go. And uh, so you can see it on the bottom there. Um, I should probably mention this. Uh, like all vinyl, uh, like all Safubi vinyl toys, you know, kaiju kind of like category, um, they'll have stuff on the, on the bottom of their feet. So you can uh, either tell where it was made or who made it, um, depending on what they wanted to put there. Um, sometimes people kind of like hide jokes or something like that there, um, so that's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is uh, so this is the tower. This is my custom painted version. Um, like I said, it was orange glow in the dark vinyl. Um, so this guy under a black light, uh, you can hear the chain inside of him, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then I did uh, uh, some bright green um, UV reactive paint, and then I made a custom blue. This is like my favorite blue color, and I thought the green and the orange and the blue looked really cool together. So I thought I'd tie that all in, to, and uh, and yeah. So there you go. There's the there's the tower, and uh, I'm gonna open this open this guy right here, um, and I'll explain to you just what his deal is. Okay, so um, so for the uh, the blank one, uh, v toy designers will kind of do like a uh, you know you can do multiple different things when when it comes to uh, when it comes to vinyl. Um, so you can do it like any color, right? You know, you can have, um, a variety of different colors like you see here. Um, you know, pretty much anything you can really think of. And then including, you know, you can do like translucent, uh, colors, um, that, that will kind of shine through. Um, you can do glow in the dark colors like this orange here or this, uh, or this actual just like glow in the dark color, like the, the traditional type. And then, um, then they, then you can do like here, I'll bring it in for the close up. Um, you, you can do uh, glitter. So, so when they're pouring the vinyl in to these, to these molds, um, they'll add certain things. You know, you could do a marbling effect where you'll add two different colors, um, and then it'll have like this cool marbling effect. Uh, but for, for this, uh, chess piece here, uh, what they did was they, uh, they poured some, uh, some, some, uh, like clear purple vinyl in there. 
and then they put some uh, glitter in there. I think, I, I'm pretty sure you probably would mix it, the glitter in the vinyl before you pour it in. I mean, I'm just assuming, I, I, you know, I don't do that, so I don't know. Um, if you do, and, and you want to correct me, please, uh, please comment below. But yeah, uh, so yeah, so this is really cool. I really like, uh, you know, some people really, really go for this kind of thing. Um, they enjoy the blank vinyl stuff, and they enjoy the uh, the 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 mix parts, you know. So that's that's kind of what these are, and uh, yeah. So I thought this was like a cool addition to my collection. You know, I wanted a, a painted one, and then I wanted one that was uh, that was unpainted. And then when I saw that they did like a mixed parts version, I was like, oh man, this is super cool. It, it, it reminds me of kind of like a, like when, it, when it's all like multicolored like this, it reminds me of like some like crazy obnoxious Fisher Price toy of some kind, you know, like it would be like making like the most obnoxious noises you could possibly imagine or something. Um, uh, yeah, I've seen, cu I've seen customizers uh, like add lights and stuff to their, to their figures. Yeah, because uh, they're all hollow. Oh yeah, and I forgot to show you guys this. Um, so the tower does something really cool, very uh, Japanese robot, even though that the, the aesthetically it looks very um, like traditionally like sci-fi, you know, like American kind of sort of thing. Uh, he's got this cool chain uh, on his uh, saw arm there so you can, so you can sw just swing it around, uh, you know. <laughs> so yeah, uh, there he is. There's the tower. That's Violence Toy. Please go check him out. Um, and uh, now we're going to be taking a look at some um, Chinese vinyl. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be, that should be fun. Uh, here we go. Now this next artist um, is really cool. Um, their name is uh, Kier Jun. And you can follow them on Instagram at, oops, at Kier Jun. Uh, that's uh, K-E-A-R-J-U-N. Um, and... Uh, and their toys are super awesome because they're very horror inspired. Um, now which one should I talk about first? Um, I guess we'll talk about the uh, Yuza. So uh, here's the Yuza, and um, this one's really cool. So so these these are based on um, uh, like at least the this one is, and uh, so is this one. They're based on the uh, Lucille Fulci movie. I'm wearing a T-shirt, but I also have the big box VHS of it um, of Zombie. Um, so it's an, an Italian uh, zombie film, um, and uh, if you've never seen it before, it's super gory. There's a zombie versus a shark in there, which is really awesome. There's an awesome uh, eye gouging scene in there, and uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's it's pretty gross, it's pretty gory, it's pretty cheesy. Um, but uh, if you're watching this, it's probably right up your alley. So uh, definitely go check that out, and 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 obviously you can see. Uh, here, I'll, I'll bring it over here. You can see the uh, the influence of the uh, sculpt there, you know, with the teeth and the eye and, and all that stuff. Uh, this one is a blank, um, so it is going to be harder to see that detail, um, but uh, regardless. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, for this user, um, an interesting... Uh, I, I've, all the ones that I've bought, in, except for this one, have been um, from a lottery. So, a lottery is where... It's usually done on Instagram. Uh, they, you can do them on your websites, and uh, you know people have done them on their websites. Um, but you'll you'll basically put all your information in there, and uh, and your PayPal information and stuff, and then you're just entered uh, in a chance to win the chance to buy it. Uh, so um, that's how I've gotten most of mine, where I enter, um, you know, the lottery, and then I, I was uh, I was I was lucky enough to be able to buy them. Um, so. Uh, he, they did a run where there was uh, two um, of these meats uh, vinyl marbled. And so it's like a flesh tone vinyl with uh, that red in there to make it look like raw meat. And that's been pretty popular um, this past year. Um, you know, there's been quite a few releases with this, with this type of meat marbling effect. Um, and I think it's awesome. You know, that's why I haven't painted this one. Uh, because it's just really cool. And there's even some clear vinyl in there um, on the tips of his toes and on the tips of his fingers, I can see it. Um, so that's really cool. I really just like how grotesque he looks. Very, very, very gross. You know, he's got his intestines hanging out. Again, um, this is this is a, uh, a heavily textured um, type of figure. Um, so I, I, again, I really, I'm very drawn to this kind of stuff. This, these very crude, um, gross looking guys. Um, and then there's even a, a face on the back. Um, it's hard to see, it's right there. 
um, but I have a, two more of the, of the body types. They just have different um, heads and arms. Um, so let me show those. Um, this one right here, this nice and colorful one, this one's called the uh, fucking rock. <laughs> so, they have, so they have very interesting names. Um, but I think it's awesome. Now this, this is a, um, if you're a fan of vinyl toys, if you're a fan of Safubi, then um, this probably looks familiar to you and you probably already know this, but I'll tell you anyway. Uh, this one's based off of um, the insanely rare and insanely expensive uh, Nag 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 uh, vinyl toys. Um, it's based, the head is, is heavily based on that look, you know, with like the very grotesque uh, long lip features and the nose. Um, but I really like this one. I, this is probably like the closest I'll ever come to owning an egg. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and I painted this one. Um, I, I painted this one a, a yellow base. Now he was a, a, a meat marbled vinyl as well, but since I already had one in the collection um, and I really wanted to paint this guy like a really crazy, kooky, kind of like um, bright colors, um, I, I decided to go with him to paint and um, yeah, so like I said, I did a yellow uh, vibrant base, and then I did um, some blue and pink and purple sprays, um, and then uh, to really bring out that detail, so now you can see all the guts and like all the stuff hanging out there on his chest, and I even uh, extenuated the face on the on on the back there, so you can see that. Um, so their articulation is also on this figure. On this body type is also uh, reminiscent of the uh, of the nag figures as well. They have th these uh, these little arm joints here, so you can kind of turn their arms like that. Um, so yeah, this, this I'm really proud of this one. Actually, <laughs> I really like them. Kind of reminds me of like uh, like a cereal or something, like some really like gross cereal. I also did uh, purple and blue dry rubs on certain parts of them to to bring out that that cr that detail like right around here. Um, a dry rub, if you don't know, um, is where is where you put paint on something um, while and then while it's still wet, you like do a wash or something like that, and then you wipe it all off. Um, for painting something like this, if you put paint down first, you're going to want to clear coat it or just like do like some kind of setting spray uh, or of some kind before you do that because you don't want to wipe off all that hard work you did. Trust me, I've I've made plenty of of mess ups when I was painting my own stuff. Um, that's part of just uh, becoming a painter, becoming, you know, a uh, custom artist here. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but um, usually they're always fixable. So I, I, you know, I always practiced on, on some, uh, you know, some lesser, you know, I pra practice on action figures or like vintage toys that didn't matter. You know, I remember I, I painted a lot of uh, Kenner Predator figures, um, those vintage Kenner Pre Predator figures when I was first starting out. Um, just to, you know, because they had like clear ones or, or you know, or, or just like something I could just like hose down with white and then like completely start over. Um, so that was like a good like training kind of uh, thing to do, you know. Um, so, it, you know, if you're looking to get into painting and stuff, um, I definitely recommend trying on something a little bit less expensive first so you don't, you know, disappoint yourself or, you know. But, you know, uh, art is also about risk. So, you know. Uh, maybe maybe you should take that risk. I don't know. It's your toy. It's your choice. You totally do what you want with it. Um, so now uh, continuing on, um, we got another uh, of the same body type, uh, but this one has a different head and a different arm, and this one's called uh, the Halosan. Um, now this one is very uh, it's very um, uh, Halloween like. Um, now I love like. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been playing Bloodborne a lot lately, and uh, I really like really grotesque, freak-looking creatures that like you're like I'm not sure where the, where it starts and where it ends, um, and uh, and this guy is very much like that. He's got this like insane-looking head. Um, it's really hard to make out, but there's one eye, right there, and then there's the other one, and and it's kind of like a pumpkin, like a rotting pumpkin, right? You can see the stem there. Or it's like a squash or something, and it has all these bulbs all over it. You know, like are they teeth? Are they rotting? I don't know. It's really it's kind of all up for the uh, imagination, I guess, and, and for how you want to paint it. Um, now this one was a was like a pea soup green vinyl. Um, I also got this one off of a lottery. Um, he's he's got this like really cool like sharp jaggy hand there, um, which is a which is a different variation of the of the arms that were given. 
Um, again, you know, he's got that face on the back there and stuff. Um, yeah, so so this is kind of a cool, uh, you know, like with these three here, uh, you you can uh, it just shows what as a, as like an artist what you can do um, to to get longevity out of a mold, right? So so he so they don't have to change the bodies. You know, they can just keep going and they can like, oh, let's make a new head or let's make a new arm or, you know, like if they wanted to make new legs or something, they probably could, you know, as long as it was compatible with that original body. You know, so uh, there's a lot of vinyl toy artists that do that kind of stuff like uh, Real Head, um, Mutant Vinyl Hardcore does that, um, you know, and that's the that's kind of the fun in um, swapping as well. So if you find something compatible, you could make yourself a really cool custom uh, if you can find, you know, like a... You know, swappable parts or something. You know, and uh, uh, Hollow San came with a uh, with a little tiny uh, severed head there, and it's like a samurai looking guy, and his like oh, his tongue is like it looks like his tongue was all cut out and stuff. Yeah, very gory. Very, you know, these aren't toys for kids. These are you know these are like adult uh, toys. Not like that. Um, <laughs> coming to think of it, it's really hard to tell people what you do. You know, when you when you're like. Yeah, I collect adult uh, adult toys or like a vinyl toys or something. Like they don't know what it is that you know you're trying. You're like stumbling over your words trying to like figure out like what exactly to tell them what you do or what you collect or something like that. I always find that kind of a funny situation. Um, and then last up for uh, for Keir Jones toys, um, this one is um, I, I'm not sure which which name the which name the heads were. So there's like two different heads for this body. Um, this is like the first uh, body that they came out with, minus the uh, minus this like little knife arm here. Um, now it's either called Kella, Kella or Leka, um, and uh, I'm not sure which 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 name of the head this is. So it's either one of those two, uh, either Kella or Leka. And um, I got this one from uh, True Tech, and you can follow him on Instagram. Um, he's really really cool. Um, he's a really great dude. He actually um, did all the molding and casting for my uh, Zangachi Keshi figures that are up on my site right now if you want to buy some. But, but uh, also, uh, True Tech has a, a website called softtoyhobby.com. You can go uh, keep up to date with all of the uh, new vinyl releases, all the new Sufubi stuff coming out. Um, he's really, really good at keeping up to date with all that stuff. So that's how I find out about stuff, you know, besides Instagram. So if you would like to get into this hobby, if you'd like to get more stuff, definitely go check out his website. Um, and then uh, you can also follow him on Instagram, like I said. Um, that's uh, T-R-U-T-E-K. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, anyway, back to the toy. Uh, he painted this one, and holy shit, like, I, I wish I could paint this good, like, like just like the subtle it's so subtle but yet like I, I think this is like a perfect paint job in my opinion I, I love it usually I kind of go overboard um, but I really like how simplistic this one is um, uh, truth be told uh, this isn't his original accessory it's just something I had um, and I thought it looked really great with him so I gave it I gave him a little butcher knife um, but yeah so there's um, uh, some light uh, some like dark purple sprays on the chest here on the guts um, some like gold staples in there to, for, for like the grossness. I love the eyes and teeth. Like th those were hand painted. Um, and then he's got his little uh, hook hand here and uh, it has like some, some it's like black with uh, silver brush work on there so to give it kind of like that um, like brushed metal look. Um, but yeah, and he's, he's kind of on the shorter end, um, a little bit shorter than the, uh, than the Yuza. Um, uh, there was an original head for this uh, and the original um, other arm and uh, that one was called the Yuza and then this is the Yuza Returns version. So uh, yeah, so that that is Kier Jun Toys. Um, like I said, give them a follow if, you, if you're if you interested in these in these kind of toys. Um, and then uh, what, what's next? What are, what are we going to be looking at next? Oh, okay. So uh, we are going to be doing a little bit of a lightning round. I'm going to be just like throwing some some stuff out here for you guys, um, some some quick stuff. Let me just go off frame here for a minute. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. What, what's the first one? Uh, we're going to do this one, uh, Frank Mysterio's uh, Primitive Monster. Now this one, this is an interesting toy. Um, this one was made in Mexico. How cool is that? Um, so yeah. So. When it comes to designer toys, toy punk, toy art, 
Um, uh, it doesn't really, I mean, it does to certain people. It matters where it's made, you know. Uh, it can't be called a safubi unless it was made in Japan. Um, so this would just be called like a vinyl toy or, you know, something like that. Um, a designer vinyl piece, you know, it, it's all about the wording, I guess, you, you, or your wording, uh, depending on what you want to call it. Um, but uh, this is made by uh, Frank Mysterio. He's made some really, really cool figures in the past. Um, he does he, he does really awesome graffiti work, so uh, definitely check his Instagram out if you want to see some of his graffiti work, if you want to see some of the other toys he has. Um, and then he has a link to his uh, big cartel on his, on his uh, Instagram as well, so you can check that out. Um, this one was completely white. Um, he was doing uh, like a little sale on Instagram uh, for some of the first uh, pulls of the figure. And, uh, and I hit him up and I was like, yeah, I'm really interested in this. Um, again, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, figures with heavy texture, um, heavy like grotesqueness. Um, but this one just, he kind of like takes the cake, doesn't he? He's just kind of like very, very, very like uh, monstrous, very um, uh, just like the, the texture work on him is really crazy. You know, like, just, like on this little tiny little stub arm he's got. You know, I like I, I like the uh, asymmetry with him. You know, he's got this like big hulking, dragging arm, and then he's got this like <laughs> this little wimpy arm, and then he's got this like weird bulbs and stuff going on there, and then he's got like three faces. You know, he's got like this this face here. You know, if you cover that up, you kind of you know, oh, there's a face, and then he, and then he, as you go over, you know, he's got like more faces in between them. I love that. Like, you know, this is this is kind of I I really enjoy the. Uh, the creativity that goes into this one. Like, I, I really like pieces of, of toys and vinyl and stuff like that where where it's like, depending on how you look at it, you know, it, it is something the way it is. And then when, when you're painting them, it, it's kind of all up to you to extenuate kind of what you want the person to view this toy the way that you painted it. You know, it's like, I, I really enjoyed this part of the sculpt or something like that. So I'm really going to go in there and kind of extenuate that. Um, I painted this one as well. Um, it, you might uh, see uh, similarities between uh, this guy and this uh, Yuza figure. Um, this is kind of like a, like a little. It's not you know I don't I'm not gonna go out and say like hey it's an original. Uh, no one else thought of this colorway but me. But um, this is kind of like my favorite colorway to do. Um, I, I really enjoy the yellow base with like pink and blue and you know I I, I just really like that. I don't know. Like again again it reminds me of like some kind of like really messed up. 80s 90s cereal box or or like like what your you know like fruity pebbles would look like if they were sitting in your milk for like two days or something i don't know but yeah um so yeah let's let's continue with this lightning round let's 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 keep it going uh what else do i got um oh okay cool um so i also painted another thing recently um this is a real head um figure um it's real head and doku uh, or not, my bad. Um, it's Real Head and Skull Toys. Um, they uh, Real Head is another one of those uh, Safubi makers who does a lot of like mixing and matching with their toys. So, so this body and this arm is kind of like the standard buck. You know, this is like the standard form um, figure. And then they kind of like change the arms around and they change the heads around to to create like a vast variety of different finger, uh, fig fingers, Jesus, figures. And, um, and a bunch of different, uh, artists will get involved, you know, um, and they'll, they'll make their own version of the, uh, of their, of the, uh, real head, like signature figure here. And, uh, this one was, uh, was done by, uh, Skull Toys and this is the Doku Rocks Man. Um, I believe I brought this in for the first episode and he was a clear vinyl and I stuffed him full of uh, tinsel from a uh, from an Easter basket to, gi to give him like uh, some kind of like cool insides look so when you held him up to the light or something it would, it would kind of like shine through um, and then I decided to uh, go along and uh, and paint him so I did a again a yellow with uh, with blue and pinks and that's kind of like you know again I'm not going to say that they're, they're my signature colors but uh, it's you know my favorite colors to work with and then um, I did like this like oil slick metallic sheen for like the face and the arm and the hand and kind of like on the shoulder here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty proud of this one too. I really like the way that he turned out. Um, man, a lot of the same type of colorway on this one. I had not realized that when I was choosing all these figures to show off today. Um, 
So I apologize with, uh, with, for the lack of variety in paint schemes, I guess. Um, but yeah, this one's really awesome. Um, I, I recently got him in a lottery as well. So um, again, I'm always kind of going after the blank figures. Unless like uh, the paint scheme on somebody else's figure like really call, speaks to me or something, like that, like that meets figure, um, then, I'll, then I'll definitely go after it. But you know, usually nine times out of 10, I'll try and get something blank so I can put it on the blank shelf for a while. And then when I feel like I'm up to it, I can uh, grab it off the shelf and, and, and give it a paint um, and, then, and then post it on Instagram, do my whole little routine and stuff. So yeah, uh, moving along with the lightning round. Um, uh, what else we got? Okay, we got uh, True Tech. Uh, I just talked about uh, his, that painting, uh, that he painted one of those uh, Kirjun figures. Um, this is one of his, Safubi. This is a, a smog ball. Now this is uh, kind of like the uh, primitive monster. Um, he has like, multiple eyes going around it's a clear a clear purple vinyl so go, uh, harking back to uh, what we were talking about earlier with the uh, with the different ways that you can pour vinyl um, so this is really cool uh, he has like multiple eyes it's like kind of hard to make out on the on the screen right now but he has multiple eyes like going around the whole thing and then this part right here where the where the articulation cut is uh, those are actually his lips so, and then he's got like these like smokestacks coming out of the bottom of his head. And then on the bottom here, it has like some like like runnage drain looking things with like sewage pouring out. So this is kind of like um, it's kind of like an ooze it meets an egg, nag nag nag. And um, but yeah, I, I really really like the way that this guy looks. He's really cool. This is my first uh, smog ball. So um, yeah, this is this is pretty dope. I like this a lot. <laughs> I love clear vinyl stuff. Um, I, I can't get enough of that kind of kind of look. Um, I just think it looks so slick. And then when you paint on top of it, you know, like it just makes it look all the better. I love when you like do a dry rub on something like this, so then you can accentuate all that, the, the little granule details and all that stuff. So then it like just really pops and then it, but it still has that like clear look. So hmm, maybe one day I'll do that with this guy. Not really sure how I will, how I would paint him, but, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, again, you know, uh, vinyl toys don't, or Safubi or, you know, whatever, they don't have to be like a four-armed or, or like, you know, an arms and legs and head type of thing. You know, it could have two heads, it could have three heads, you know, it could, it could, you know, have like weird spider legs or something. It's all about how the artist designs it. And it, like something like this just goes to show how creative people can actually be. Um, and then, you know, something like this would be kind of cheaper to produce, um, but yet, you know, it's still highly sought, sought after by collectors. Um, yeah. All right. And then um, one of the last figures we're going to be looking at today is uh, Justin Ishmael's um, Galag Galagantis. I, I, if I'm butchering that name, I really, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, so Galagantis um, was based on the uh, 1968 uh, Jack the Giant Killer uh, film. Um, now, it's I, I would say it's more based on the uh, Famous Monsters magazine cover art. Um, this is the box that he came in. Um, now he came unassembled, um, so so he, like all of his arms and his heads, because this one's got two heads. Um, they were all unassembled. So it it would be like kind of how um, if like you were a maker, a Safubi maker, and they sent you the the raw parts from the factory. Um, uh, these were cut, you know, these were cut so you could just like heat them up and put them together. So yeah, you take a heat gun or like a hair dryer or something and you heat up the vinyl so it's nice and squishy and then uh, you put them together kind of like one of those old vintage vinyl model kits or something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I just really like the box. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, this one was also made in Japan. Uh, and what's really cool is this is officially licensed by Famous Monsters magazine. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, let's actually take a look at the actual figure. I'll put this to the side, and here we are. So, um, so there there are quite a few. It's it's kind of like a uh, a reoccurring uh, theme to uh, do a two-headed kaiju, two-headed Safubi monster. Um, I'll take his little chain scarf scarf off. Um, so he has this like cool little ball and chain that attaches to his. Uh, is one of his cufflinks here. I just took it off because uh, it was it was affecting him on his on his shelf when he was when he was standing up because uh, he kept falling over and knocking all my shit over. Uh, 
but yeah, uh, so so it's kind of popular to do the uh, the two headed monster, um, and then and then a lot of the of those two headed monsters are in some shape or way, some shape or form, uh, based on that uh, this original cover of this magazine slash that movie, um, and there are quite a few popular. Um, unobtainable figures that are heavily based on this and this would be like my first um, of piece of Safubi vinyl that that uh, that is actually based on that um, I have a target earth piece uh, that's all that also has two heads that that I, you could probably say that it was inspired by that um, but this this guy is like spot on to the uh, to, to the art and I just think it's really awesome like and also he glows in the dark so how cool is that maybe if I hold him up to one of these lights Give it a minute. It's cooking. It's cooking. Don't worry. Is he? No, you can't tell. <laughs> wow, what a waste of uh, three seconds. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so he glows in the dark, um, bright as hell. I don't know what they make these things out of, maybe like radioactive material or something. I don't know, uh, but, they're, but they're super vibrant, super bright. Um, uh, I have a black light above one of my shelves. So like all the, the, the UV reactive painted stuff, all the glow in the dark stuff, it looks like a friggin light show when you when you turn on that neon light uh, that uh, black light so that looks really cool uh, he's so high high uh, the highlight on him was like making him glow there we go i love all like again you know it's not like gross texture this time this one's like it's like scaled texture and then on the bottom it's like fur and like you know so it's like very uh ray harryhausen you know uh cyclops monster kind of look as well uh but yeah, um, and then we're going to take a look at something very special now. The Alleganta Super Bowl right over here. Okay, so this I haven't shown on the show yet, uh, but uh, this guy might look a little familiar. Um, if you guys watched my uh, Keshi episode, I had a toy called uh, Zingachi, and he was like a little rubber figure, and he had four arms, and he looked like a sh little shark man, um, even though he's not. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is uh, this is my Safubi. So this is the only Safubi. Uh, well, I won't I won't say that because I have an order coming right now uh, uh, for my first painted run of these, which is really exciting, and they'll be available soon. And I will definitely do uh, an episode and plug all my crap when that comes out. But uh, as of right now, this is the only version assembled and painted of Zingachi himself. Um, so when you're when when you're making your toy. Um, you'll usually be sent a uh, test pull, um, and it'll be all put together for you, and they'll send it off to you, and uh, you know you can like check all the like uh, the joints and and all that stuff to see if they're if they're okay with you, and then uh, and then you can paint it or keep it blank or something like that. I decided to paint it to see to kind of like test how it would look, um, and uh, this is kind of how I envision Zangachi's colors to look. Um, and uh, so yeah, I did like a like a very metallic, sheeny blue, and then I did like a yellow gold color, and I did like this very light, uh, uh, like pinkish purple color as well. Um, but yeah, th so this is him. This is Zingachi. This guy is around uh, nine inches, uh, around ten inches tall, I want to say, actually. And um, it has my little uh, smiley face symbol there. So this guy hit was in production hell for like uh, two and a half years. Um, I had uh, gotten the uh, I had gotten it uh, digitally sculpted because at the time I wasn't doing like a whole bunch of sculpted stuff. I wasn't involved with anyone who do who could do sculpting. So uh, when I first wanted to get this made, it was like a while ago, you know. So I would say it was like maybe almost three years ago that I that I started this journey, right? And um, I had gotten into contact with some with some Safu with uh, a producer, basically. So you get in contact with someone. Who can basically be a liaison, right? And so you'll you'll give them your mold or your original prototype, which I had 3D printed, um, and then I sent that to him, and then from there they made the molds for them. Uh, well, I mean you have to make the uh, wax version basically. So it's like the same thing, the same toy, same everything, but made in the wax version. So then when they make the mold of it, um, they can just pour it'll melt, and then they can just pour the wax out, and then voila, you have your mold. Um, and then from there, they they pour the vinyl in there, and then um, and then it's it's cut and assembled, and then you got your vinyl toy. Um, and so it took a while for mine to get to that stage, um, 
uh, you know, because I was like new on the scene and, and I really didn't know how things worked. Um, so it like took me a while to like figure out like how to get it done and and, and like the the person I was working with wasn't the best at I, I don't want to like shit talk or anything I'm not I'm not going to um, but you know it, I ran into some troubles so uh, it took a while but now finally uh, it, you know knock on wood everybody uh, knock on wood at home did you do it do it right now okay you're done all right now I can keep talking so uh, hopefully all that stuff is all behind me now and then I can get all this stuff uh, up and going to you I'll be making a journey um, in November to uh, designer con in Pasadena California and um, I'll have some Keshi there, and I'll have some uh, of my vinyl toy there as well. So that'll be really fun. And I'm hope hopefully I'm shooting for an October release um, for the uh, for the new Keshi, which will be orange in honor of uh, Halloween. And then um, I'm, I also want to do a giveaway on this uh, show, so you should definitely watch and be prepared for that. I will definitely announce that. And then I also. Um, want to do a release for the Safubi in October too so I'll probably like I'm getting around like 20 ish um, units so um, I can kind of like split that up and I'll do like some micro releases and um, and see what we can go from there so, so that'll be a lot of fun um, but yeah I, I'm, I'm just really happy that this guy is like finally like I'm finally getting really close to releasing the first series of these like I, I like I'm happy to have it with me, but I would I will only be truly happy until you you right there, yeah you you have this like I will only be happy until you buy my shit so do it, <laughs> um, yeah like the, the whole idea is you know I just I I you know I I'm very passionate about these things I'm very passionate about toys I'm very passionate about my art, and so I just want you guys to uh, to have it you know I want I want my toy that I conceptualized that, that I got made and I want it to be in your collection you know so so yeah I want my toys to be hanging out with your toys um yeah so there's there's a uh, Zengachi the Safubi um well guys uh today was a lot of fun I had a lot of fun looking at uh, all the different vinyls I hope you guys had fun looking at my uh vinyl toys my collection I hope you got jealous that you can have any of this shit uh, <laughs> just kidding um I, I highly recommend you guys go out and follow some of these uh, some of these artists. Um, go buy some of their shit if it's available. Um, and get your get your collection started. You know, um, start with the small stuff and then work your way up. That's what I did. Um, or you know, just go for the cheap shit. You know, who cares? <laughs> um, I, I understand it. It gets to be an expensive hobby. Um, you can follow uh, me on Instagram at uh, Video Vomit. Um, you can uh, follow us on, uh, or you can follow me on Tumblr. You can follow me on Twitter, and then you can follow our Instagram. Or, or oh my God, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me right now. You can follow our YouTube. Uh, give it a subscribe so you can always be kept up to date with our latest videos. Um, we're also posting on Twitch, so you can follow us on there. Um, we always post our videos to Facebook after we're done here, so you can always watch it on there at any time. Show, share to your friends, share to your loved ones, um, share to your confused grandma if you'd like. Um, and then I'm also going to be seeing it tomorrow. I'll be taking the outside journey to go see it. Um, so maybe uh, maybe next show we, we can do a little uh, little it review. See how it was. Um, uh, but yeah. So next time, guys, uh, that that should be fun. I want to talk a little bit about movies. You know, there's a lot of movie stuff going on. So so yeah, we'll talk about movie stuff. We'll talk about it. Um, yeah. So until next time, guys. Same bunker time. Same bunker place. Take it easy, everybody.